guys, Mark here, and it's been just over a month since I bought the base model MacBook Pro, and now with all the things that were just announced at WWDC this year, this is the perfect time to reevaluate the 2020 MacBook Pro and talk about whether or not you should be considering this MacBook, or any of Apple's current MacBooks for that matter, as your next big tech investment. So I won't dive deep into design as I covered all that in my last video about this MacBook, but the basic things that you need to know are that it's essentially the same design as last year, except it's a slight bit thicker and a slight bit heavier with a couple of exceptions like the upgraded Magic Keyboard and physical escape key that's no longer housed within the touch bar. The keyboard is a great place to start really talking about this laptop. Over the past month, I've been using this laptop in a bunch of different ways, but it mostly gets used whenever I need to type up a script for my videos, so the keyboard has definitely been put through its paces. It's miles and miles ahead of the butterfly keyboards on past models. Key travel is much deeper and I'm much more confident in my key presses. The butterfly keyboards were much too shallow and prone to failure, so I'm super happy that they went ahead and made this change after, what, nearly four years of terrible keyboard designs. The keys are still fairly quiet, so you won't have to worry about clacking away in the middle of a lecture hall full of people or in an open office area. Apple is back to making solid keyboards in their laptops again, and I'm giving the new Magic Keyboard here a thumbs up. Like I mentioned earlier, this base model has nearly the exact same design as last year's MacBook Pro 13, therefore it only comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack for I.O. The more expensive 10th gen version of this MacBook Pro actually comes with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is definitely an upgrade. For me personally, it hasn't been a huge deal only having two. There were a couple of times where I was annoyed that I had to unplug my USB-C power cable in order to plug in a second peripheral, but most of the time it was fine because I mitigated that need for extra ports with a Thunderbolt 3 capable BenQ monitor, which I talked about in my 2020 MacBook Pro desktop setup video, which you can find in the link up here if you're interested. I've also watched a lot of YouTube videos and TV shows on this laptop over the past 30-ish days, and I gotta say the speakers on this thing are very impressive. I found myself reaching for headphones very few times because because the sound that comes out of the two small speakers on each side is loud and full enough to use without needing headphones. Apparently the upgraded version of the MacBook Pro has even better speakers though, so that's something worthwhile to note, but these are definitely nothing to sneeze at. The speakers combined with the awesome 1440p retina display makes the 13-inch MacBook Pro a great laptop for watching anything video related. Battery life as a whole has been pretty solid as well. Apple claims around 10 hours of mixed use, but I think I get around an hour or two less than that when I'm browsing the web or watching videos with Google Chrome. I would use Safari, Apple, but you've still capped video playback at 1080p, so Chrome, sorry to say, is the only way to go for me personally. Obviously, if you're getting into something heavier than web browsing like video editing or gaming, battery life is gonna drop off pretty significantly depending on how heavy that task is that you're doing. And that's a pretty good segue into performance. Obviously, you're looking to buy a base model MacBook Pro here, so top-end performance is probably not something that's important to you, or at least it shouldn't be, because there are other Windows-based machines at this price point that will absolutely blow this thing out of the water. That said, if you're looking for a laptop that can fly through light to medium tasks with ease, like web browsing, watching 4K YouTube videos, filling in Excel sheets, or even some light video editing, the base model MacBook Pro will do that just fine. I've been mostly using this laptop as a media machine and to type up some scripts, but I've played around with Final Cut Pro on it as well, and it holds its own just fine. 1080p video won't cause you any grief, but 4K will unless you drop the playback resolution to better performance instead of high quality. I didn't talk about this all that much in my initial review of this laptop, but temperature and cooling tends to be a bit of a sore spot when it comes to Intel-based MacBook Pros. Yes, I said Intel-based MacBooks, and we'll talk about that little point of differentiation in a couple of minutes. This base model MacBook Pro does just fine in normal use. Even when my Thunderbolt 3 monitor is plugged in, the CPU temperature tends to sit around 55 to 60 degrees with the fans staying silent as long as I'm not doing anything heavy. Start using Final Cut Pro, however, and the temperatures will easily spike to the thermal limits of around 99 degrees with the fans kicking up a huge storm. So most of the things that I just said, minus the temperature thing, sounds pretty good, and that's because it is. Generally speaking, I've been very happy with the 2020 base model MacBook Pro 13. God, I gotta shorten that somehow. It's no powerhouse, but it's built well, it's got a great set of speakers, an amazing display, and a fantastic keyboard. All that said, in light of the recent announcements at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, or WWDC for short, this laptop just got a lot harder to recommend. Let's talk about that. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, maybe drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Apple announced a lot of stuff at WWDC, including changes to iOS 14 like widgets on the home screen page and an app library, new scribble features on the iPad, sleep tracking on the Apple Watch, and a bunch of other stuff, but by far, 
The coolest announcement was the transition away from Intel-based Macs to Apple Silicon. Not only that, but the first Apple Silicon Macs will be sold towards the end of this year. I knew they were coming, but I assumed it would take at least a year or so. I never imagined that we'd have them this soon. It also makes the title of my initial review of this laptop pretty ironic, given that after the announcement, it's almost definitely not the time to upgrade. <laughs> Gonna have to change that title. Ugh. Apple has been making their own CPUs for a really long time, and the performance of the iPhone and iPad has been industry leading because of it, with high performance at a low power draw. And the fact that they're now bringing that overall experience into their laptops and their desktops means that the MacBooks, the iMacs, and even the Mac Pros could be getting really good really fast. I mean, just look at the Geekbench 5 scores between the iPad Pro and the base model MacBook Pro I'm reviewing right now. The iPad Pro with the A12Z CPU that's made by Apple is faster than the 8257U inside the MacBook Pro 13, despite the fact that the iPad is fanless and much, much smaller. Just imagine what kind of performance Apple could crank out of their own ARM-based chips if it was inside something as big as a laptop or even a desktop. So all of this might sound like a bunch of techie mumbo jumbo to you, and that's fair, but the bottom line is this. Faster, more efficient MacBook Pros are just right around the corner. And if you can wait, you absolutely should because this could be the biggest bump in performance that we're gonna see in a long time. If you need a laptop right now though and you're in the market for one of these, I'm not gonna tell you not to buy it because it's still a great laptop and Apple is committed to supporting these Intel-based Macs for a long time. So you're still gonna get many, many years of use out of it. But if you can wait, if you can just hold out to the end of the year, you absolutely should, because Apple's got big things coming, and I'd hate to serve you up a hot, steamy plate of buyer's remorse without warning you first. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel. And as always, have a great day.